quick tuning video to help out the aces guys out there running a kill shot and this probably will apply to uh other aces platforms but i'm running a kill shot tbi on a small block ford uh it's got gt40p heads cam headers exhaust uh intake manifold not a super uh, high horsepower motor but it is built a little bit I'm probably in the 350 horsepower at the crank range. But I was having some uh, cold start issues, hot start issues, and I swapped a manual four speed in this truck. And I was having some issues when I would go to press the clutch in. Uh, sometimes the motor would want to uh, die and I'd have to crank it back up literally while the truck was rolling. Uh, Mainly more uh, high speeds, like if I was going like 55, 60, uh, even 45 sometimes. And then, you know, going to make a, a turn or just coming to a stop. If I'd press that clutch in real fast and I was in high RPMs or whatever, um, the truck would just cut out. So this little video I'm making here, it'll address the those issues. Like I said, hot starts, cold starts, and uh, for the... For the uh, manual transmission guys pressing that clutch in if you're having an issue with it dying on you so let me jump jump in the truck and i'll show you on the handheld all right i got the handheld booted up here we're gonna go to this tab right here we're gonna go to tuning and we'll start with fuel here you're gonna go to basic and then go down fuel power on percent that's going to be the first thing you can play with um, depending on if your truck needs more fuel or less fuel uh, mine ended up needing uh, more so i bumped that number up and then you can also play with the fuel prime percent that is kind of if you're familiar with carburetors your fuel prime percent that's kind of like a uh, accelerator pump on a carburetor. It's that first initial amount of fuel that's being sprayed into the motor. So I upped that as well. My motor was needing some more fuel. Um, a, a good way to tell if your motor's needing more fuel is if you go to crank it up and your engine's not wanting to fire, but you cycle that key maybe two or three times and then it busts right off. That's kind of telling you, you need more uh, fuel. Um, now the opposite is if in order to get it cranked, you got to hold that pedal to the floor and let air pull through that uh, throttle body. That's telling you, you got too much fuel in there and you're having to pull extra air in to atomize that fuel and get it blown out of the motor. Um, Cause basically you're, you're flooding your motor. So that's two easy ways to tell. Um, exactly what your truck has needs or is telling you or not your truck but your motor um more or less fuel so you can just play with those and uh get it kind of you know tuned out when you're doing this just click on it you can change it um i would maybe do it in 10 or 15 percent increments don't go crazy and write down what your truck's at or what your uh kill shot is at at the moment um that way if you want to go back to factory and or just go back to whatever you had you have it written down and you can go back to it and you're not guessing on you know what where you started in case you can really screw things up you can also save these tunes to usb and then you know down the road if things start getting real squirrely or you just want to start all over you can come back and load that tune in so if you're not going to save it on a usb definitely write it down throw it in your glove box or something so you got it so you can keep track of uh everything that you change and keep a log of everything that you change that way um you know down the road if you can really dial in something and, and figure it out you can go back and look at that log and say Hey, this thing affected this, that affected that. And uh, you can really tune these things well if you keep good notes. But anyways, that is uh, pretty much all you're going to be able to do on this screen that's going to affect 
cranking. Um, we'll go to fuel pump, key on, pump, hold time. Um, I believe that's like three seconds from the factory, or maybe four. I believe three. I bumped mine up to 6.5 seconds because basically uh, my truck sits for a little while and I don't crank it up or do anything. So all the fuel drains back down these lines and back into the tank. And uh, so anyways, when I first initially turned the key on, it uh, takes a while for the fuel pump to fill it with fuel and then pump it all the way up to the throttle body. So uh, having that set higher gives it more time um, to get fuel up to your actual throttle body itself. And that way it's actually priming like it's supposed to. If it's priming and there's no fuel in the throttle body, you're obviously not getting any fuel in your motor. So that's another thing you can change. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Um, let's go to idle. No. No, not here. I think it's under. Yeah, here we go. Park Air versus ECT. Um, I had to raise these values up really high on mine. But if you modify your fuel, um, if you give your engine more fuel, you're going to want to raise your Park Air versus ECT. So um, if it's firing up cold perfectly, but when you go to crank it, and fire it up hot um and again you're having to press that pedal down or something that's telling you your motor is maybe needing less fuel or more air um you kind of got to play with it because your motor might want a lot of fuel on startup but when it's hot it might not want a lot of fuel so you can give it a lot of fuel on startup with that fuel power on and prime and all that and then you can come in here and you know, that's your coolant temp right there. So if it's hot, you can raise that value way up to allow a lot of air to come in and atomize that fuel. Um, I just kind of brought mine up all the way across the board. It seemed to like it. Um, and, you know, these values were way down here. I actually raised them a, a good bit. But just do it incrementally. You know, don't make huge adjustments and, and write everything down, like I was saying. That way you can go back. And change stuff if you need to or really see what's affecting with each change you can see what you're affecting and just and do it in a small scale because you might only need to bump it up 10 10 percent or 10 points um you might not need to bump it up a ton like i did so just do it little by little and you can really get it tuned in now if you're having the clutch issue if you got a manual transmission and you go to press in your clutch and it wants to cut out or die on you. Um, low side, IAC low side P, IAC low side I, same thing. This, These ones down here are pretty much left where they were. And then at about, um, I think here, 88.9 8, 8 absolute RPM error. Don't really know what that means, but from the guys on the forums and what they told me is to bump all this up. Uh, mine was at about 15 and I bumped it up to this 25 mark and kind of just went down two points as the graph went down. And I have zero issues with it dying when I push that clutch in now, um, running perfect now. And I did that for both of these graphs same thing and that completely fixed my issue with the clutch and it won't die out on me so just a few things i've learned from the uh asus efi forms and uh some of the tuners on there there's some great tuners on there in the forms uh asus recommends some of the guys in there they will you know back their tuning and stuff if you if anything happens to your asus but uh I'll put a link to some of those guys, maybe in the comments below to their webs or not in the comment in the description. I'll put a link to those guys. Um, if you need to get a remote tune, uh, don't quote me on this, but 
as of now when I'm recording this video, I think that runs around 4 to 450 uh, to get a remote tune. And, you know, that comes with revisions down the road if, you know, stuff isn't tuned just how you like it. But uh, each guy's different, but definitely a remote tune is the way to go if you don't want to mess with this stuff yourself. Um, and even me, you know, I'm trying to teach myself how to do this, but there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to, you know, that goes with these systems. And I mean, I'm completely new to EFI. I've been a carburetor guy, so I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can modify in these things. And if you go modifying the wrong stuff, you can really screw this up and your motor's gonna run like trash. So get a uh, remote tune, save yourself the headache if you got the extra cash laying around. Um, but also, if, you know, if you have some EFI knowledge, you can get in here and modify a few things to get your truck, you know, being able to be driven and uh, if you really want to fine tune it, that's where the remote tuners come in. But um, what else could I say that might help you guys out? Asus says these uh, tuners are self-learning. I agree with that to an extent. They do self-learn and kind of, you know, level themselves out the more you drive it. But from what I've read on the forums and from what everybody's saying, if you're not a tuner, and you really want this thing to act like a factory, you know, EFI, like you go to the car lot and buy a brand new truck and just run completely smoothly and perfect. That's where your, you know, your really good tuners are going to come in. They're going to know exactly every parameter to change and really get these things dialed in. So, yes, can you run these things out of the box and, and drive them? Absolutely. I've got videos of me ripping this truck basically right out the box uh without messing with any of this stuff and it it'll rip right down the road um but i'm trying to get it to where it will crank up and run just like a factory you know truck and uh good reliability just pop off soon as you hit that key hot and cold and uh so far it's been fun i've been learning uh, i'll throw up the link to the uh facebook forums if you want to go on there and get some more good information but Anyways, guys, I'll uh, leave y'all here, stop talking, give y'all some views of the shop. <laughs> but uh, anyways, hope this video helped y'all out. Check out the channel. I'm going to do more videos on this EFI stuff as I learn it and figure out this kill shot system. Um, I've got a full kill shot install video if you want to check that out. And uh, it goes into the startup wizard and, you know, you can do all that learn how to initially set up your system how to install it on your motor how i wired all my wiring under here um i'm going to do a video on how i did this little magnetic mount that just goes right there just like that sits nice and flush and then uh i got my wire just running under there and tucking underneath the carpet and it looks like you just got a lcd screen down there but anyways guys thanks for watching again hope this video helped y'all out catch y'all on the next one peace